we collaborate, like there's no limit on when we collaborate. We're on the weekends texting each other, calling each other. We're like, hey, I'm gonna stop by and like drop this off. Or, you know, I'll be watching something and be like, hey, I thought about this, let's incorporate that into our um, classrooms and you know, I'll create the technology and then I'll push it out to them so they can use it. Our common goal is to just try to create lessons that are, yes, engaging, but that also reach into real world issues and um, you know, real world problem solving. I think that we um, kind of play off each other's strengths. So Miss Nicholas is very good at science. So if she has a great science experiment to set up, you know, we're not afraid to say, hey, um, your classroom is going to be set up for science today, mine might be set up for math, and hers is guided reading and just sharing with each other, switching teachers, letting them hear it from another teacher. So we'll switch our um, students and we'll say, here, you teach them this lesson. So they're all getting the most hands-on experience and they're all getting um, the lesson and they might be getting it from somebody else. Although we've all been teaching force energy and motion, she's going to teach it maybe in a different way. So playing off of each other's strengths. And we're not afraid to stop a lesson and say, you know, I don't think that this is going well. I don't feel like I'm getting my point across. You know, it's not reaching my I can statement. And so we've all done that before. We've all stopped lessons and talked to the kids about things that didn't go well and how we can fix it for next time. Um, I think just making them feel comfortable with making mistakes. And that's really part of our big risk taking is letting them not be afraid to fail. In my room, if I'm teaching cause and effect and I have a week, I see that I have five days to teach it completely different. So I'm not going to do the same thing every day. This is the amount of time I have to teach it in seven different ways. And I'm going to do it seven different ways because I might only have one student that can learn it that way. I think just remembering that SOL scores are important. Yes, we always want to get you know good testing scores, but you're also teaching kids and you know kids aren't living a multiple choice type of life. And you know, we have to remember that they're kids and we need to be teaching them to just, you know, function and enjoy their life and not be stressed out 24-7 about a testing score, but just to be, you know, the best kid that they can be and take risks and be okay with making mistakes. <laughs>